Never fear, Alvin's here. You're watching TJV. Morning everybody from Black River Falls, Wisconsin. Just getting our wheels moving. Looked like it rained overnight a bit. The pavement looks a bit wet. I hope the roads aren't all dirty. I just washed my truck yesterday. I wanted to at least get down to Georgia with a clean truck. Eh, probably won't happen. I checked the weather radar and the weather forecast and it said it was supposed to be clear skies all the way down. Well, they lied. What else is new, right? So we're gonna get ourselves back on the highway. We have just under 2,000 kilometers left to go. That's 20 hours of driving. Gotta stop in there for a night. So it's another two days to get down. We're going down near the city of Savannah, Georgia. I picked up these uh, underground fuel tanks from Edmonton, Alberta, if you haven't been following. Been clear across the continent. Hey, look, military, show me your guns. No? Okay. Show me your guns. No? south here and we just crossed over interstate 80 which means this is the furthest south I've gone on this road I guess since our honeymoon the way down to the Gulf it's been a while we still got a long way to go I wish we had more freight going down far south like this I still don't know what my reload's gonna be I haven't been down there with a flatbed before, so I don't know what what kind of stuff we haul out of there. I have no idea. I'm still kind of thinking they're going to send me empty back up to Tennessee to pick up some steel there, because that's that I've done before, but that's as far south as I've gone with a flatbed. Everything before that was when I was on dry vans. There are lots of stuff from the south then. I went down to Mississippi, to Georgia, Florida. But... You know, there's just more money to be made on flatbed. I can't go back to drive it. <laughs> Once you taste the sweet milk and honey of the flatbeds, you just, you can't go back. You just can't go back. You know, I'll tie down my loads and tarp it in minus 30. That's fine. You just can't go back. So I'm not too sure how far we're gonna get tonight yet. I have no idea. No idea. I'm just gonna go until I get tired or until the law tells me to stop. Oh, I'm about to go and explore Bloomington, Illinois here a little bit. I'm gonna park at the pilot. 300 meters, turn right on. Caroline Street and then approaching destination on the left side at 120 meters. 
gonna grab a parking spot and do our walk here. It looks like a nice town, and this pilot is actually pretty close to town here, so I don't even have to walk that far. So hopefully they'll have some open spots. They should. Time is about quarter after four right now. Oh, I'll get in there. I'll turn right here. see what they got to offer us. It's warm enough down here that we can take the weasel with us on this walk. I left him behind the last couple of walks last week while we were up in Canada because it was just a little too cold for his paws, I think. We'll see how far we get today. At least this town believes in sidewalks. That always makes walking around a lot easier. Don't have to walk on the road with all the cars. All right, Diesel. Right? I know you're excited, bud, but you gotta stop pulling me, man. I'm walking you, you're not walking me. Don't forget that. There we go. So, the neighborhood's just across this road, over there, sort of straight ahead. We're gonna make our way that way. This sidewalk's sort of been grown over a little bit here. Let's go around the mud, Diesel. Around the mud. So we found this nice pathway that goes right through the city. I guess it's a city technically goes through a bit of a creepy neighborhood here but should go around the corner here and enter into that residential zone right behind all this stuff it's called constitution trail if you guys want to google where i was walking for some reason constitution trail in bloomington illinois started at one end of town i guess that would be the the west side of town and it sort of goes east and then turns south guess we're on our usual church lookout i see one steeple way over there well there's a steeple and you got one i don't know how many churches american towns usually have but in western canada well as you saw most little towns have a lot more than i thought I thought there's like one or two per town, but all those towns that we walked through last week had tons of them, especially Nibawa. But none come close to Steinbeck. We still hold the record. You can literally not, <laughs> not get away from them. You can be at any place, anywhere. Walk out the front door and you can see a church. <laughs> well, this looks nice. Okay, so we're gonna go over the look at this little stop sign. Diesel, don't forget to stop. There's a stop sign, man. No, stop, stop. Stop at the line, buddy. Sit, 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 Diesel. I'm serious, there you go. Sit. Why aren't you listening? Are you okay? Okay, look both ways. That way, that way, no train. Okay, there we go. Look at this, cool. Squiggliness ahead. Squiggliness. That's what we're gonna call it. Yeah, so it goes around up here and around up there over that bridge. Cool. Okay, looks like a newer neighborhood built back here. What's this say? What's this say? The Junction. Constitution Trail History Walk. Oh, cool. This is my thing. What are you doing in there, Diesel? You know. You gonna go look for friends, for beavers? I don't think I'll beavers here. So Bloomington flourished as a rail junction connecting local people with national markets. This is the busiest railroad intersection in town. From southwest to northeast ran the Chicago and Alton Railroad, 1854. That's super cool. So I can walk through Bloomington and learn history at the same time. My kind of place. Cool. Well, that looks fun. This would be a great picture. Beautiful. So they put the cage over the top too. I'm guessing that's so that people don't throw stuff over onto the trains. That's silly. It's, it's silly you gotta you know, do that kind of thing just so that people don't throw stuff at trains. Uh, well, it's the same. It's the same everywhere. Can't trust anybody. Alright, Diesel. People are crazy. 
there's another big steeple and there was another old church on the other street over there it says three so far we've only walked about a, about a mile this street is getting a little bit shady though I mean, it's getting dark out i'm in an unfamiliar city that last neighborhood i walked through i was the uh outsider I, I i was uh i think it was clear i was not from that neighborhood we ain't in southeast manitoba anymore okay no judging no judging no judging everybody i've seen so far has been really really friendly but they stare they stare at me like they've never seen a Canadian guy in a bright yellow jacket walking through their neighborhood with a dog. Let's go check out that church. You wanna go see it? Wanna go see it? Yeah. We'll see it. Yeah, the only thing I've noticed is that everyone I've seen, every single person I've seen outside their house, has asked me about my dog. They all wanna know about the dog. A couple of them asked me if he bites. Only if I tell him to. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want to tell him that he's friendly. Maybe I want them to think that he's a little aggressive. I don't know. Wow, that's a big one. And look how well it's been taken care of. Looks like it was built yesterday. You guys know me. I love history and I love these these old buildings. Look how clean this brick is. How clean that is. I mean, obviously it's been recently painted and stuff, but they take care of it. So many of these old buildings you see around the country, around the well, Canada and the US, they're all old and haven't been taken care of. This one looks brand new. It's beautiful. Look at those windows. Wow. Love to go inside. See what the front looks like. Whoa. Wow. Come here, Diesel. Come on, bud. That's amazing. Oh, I bet you it's just beautiful in there. Let's go across the street so we can get a better look at it. Wow. I would love to know the story and history behind this. When was this built? What does it say? It says the mass schedule. Okay, so it's Catholic. Okay, cool. It says St. Mary's Church. Mass schedule, yeah, so it's most likely Roman Catholic. Right, there's the statue of Mary. Parish office. Wow. This is where the priest lives, I'm guessing? And I'm thinking this is a private Catholic school right across the street. Probably. Oh yeah, this is religious education offices here. So this whole street is owned by the church, I'm guessing. I went to a private Christian school too. It was a Protestant one, non-denominational. Cool. Oh yeah, it's the St. Mary's School. Okay. That's pretty neat. I really like the school I went to. Give a really good education. And you know some of the stuff that's going around in the public school systems nowadays. Yeah, there's a lot of nonsense flying around. And I guess I got shielded from a lot of that, sheltered from a lot of that, because I never got any of that. Just stuck to the basic education. Of course, everything was taught. Uh, from a Christian point of view, from a Christian worldview, we had like chapel, other things that schools wouldn't have. It was good. And it actually gave you a, a sort of a step up, a step towards a, a university. Oh, Diesel, there's a dog there. That's okay. Knocked your yard. I'm sure he's a friend, buddy. Keep walking. There's another one. What's that one say? 
Waxman African Methodist Episcopal Church. That's an African church. Cool. Beautiful building. Look at that. I always wanted to buy an old church like that and convert it into like a big mansion and live in it. <laughs> okay, not gonna lie. This bridge is significantly creepier after the sun goes down. Yeah, I think if we come through here again, that was creepy. If we come through here again, I think next time we'll uh, try to do our walk during daylight hours. Oh, here's a nice neighborhood. Bit of a newer neighborhood out here. Just uh, something I would not recommend to you guys. When you come to a city that you're not familiar with, I've never been around in Bloomington before, maybe don't go for a walk around the town after dark. You never know. Oh, look, the train's coming. It's gonna be coming on these tracks here. We forgot to stop. Oh, diesel, we're so bad. Oh, there it comes over there. So the train does go right through town here. Wow, literally like 50 feet from people's houses. Wow. Wait for it. Wait for it. No honking? Well, that's weird. I guess they don't honk in town after a certain hour. I don't know. Yikes. Oh, that doesn't sound like a very good connection. Oh, that would have been cool if we were on the bridge right when it went under there. Well. Oh, there's a police car coming now. What's he gonna do? He's gonna have to wait for the train. Oh. Yeah. Can you hear him? Yeah, he's just gonna have to sit there and wait for the train. I hope it's not an ambulance. Can you imagine being in an ambulance, being rushed to the hospital because you're dying? And you get stuck at a train? Yeah, he's, he's stuck right over there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there's an ambulance right on the other side of those tracks. Oh, man. We've walked all the way down here already and that ambulance is still waiting on the other side of the tracks. Someone could be having a heart attack right now and the ambulance can't get to them. What are you gonna do though, right? I've never seen that happen. I've always wondered. Like I've always wondered what happens when an ambulance gets to a train track. And, well, I, I know what would happen. They'd have to wait. But I've never actually seen it happen. Still going. We're way out here and the train's finally gone. Just waiting for the arms to go up and then the siren will come back on, I'm sure. Now we can finally go. You gonna come? There he comes. Well, I hope whoever that ambulance is for isn't uh, in too much of a hurry. He's not gonna turn the siren back on, is he? I guess he doesn't need it. There you go. I find it weird that in the US, in some places, like here anyways, ambulances have blue lights, so it looks like a cop. Because we're up in Canada, police are red and blue. Across the board, everywhere, red and blue, that's police. Ambulances are red and white. And uh, fire trucks, I believe, are also red and white. Red and yellow. I don't know. Just different. Oh, the ambulance was just going up the street here. Just down the street from the railway crossing. So the people who were waiting for it could literally see it. Waiting for the train. Just down the street. Oh man, that's got to be stressful. And we made it back. Still got about another five hours of driving ahead of us tonight, so I was just thinking, man, this place filled up. There's tons of spots when we got here. Now it's all just filled up. I gotta drive another five hours and then try and find a place to park. Wish me luck. 4.75 kilometers, so a little under three miles. 
I wanted to go further, but it got dark so fast. I'm not familiar with this area. And like I said, the people in that neighborhood, they were making me uncomfortable. They were just staring at me. I kept asking about my dog. I mean, don't get me wrong, they, the ones that talked to me were friendly, but everyone else was just staring at me like I didn't belong there. So, it made me uncomfortable. But it was all right, it was all right. So, uh, now we're gonna get back on the road. You have five hours and 49 minutes of remaining drive time. Well, almost six hours of remaining drive time yet. Woo! Feels so late, because the time of year. Guess we better get out there. Let's get out of town. Are any of you from Bloomington? This is a nice city. I'd like to explore other parts of it. The part I went through was pretty nice. It was an old area. In it was still meters, nice. Take the entrance to the right on I-55 South US 51 South on 74 East. Okay, so I gotta be in the right lane. Gotcha. I'm a little bit hungry. I'm gonna wait a little while. I don't wanna eat too much, otherwise I did that whole walk for nothing. freeway here. What road is this? Interstate 55 and US Highway 51 South and Interstate 74 East. Three roads in one. <laughs> 